Hey everyone, this video is going to be a bit different from others. After recording about 14 hours worth of footage from this game, I came to the realization that it was all unusable because of audio issues where I had the game way too loud and you couldn't hear a word I was saying. So I decided to take after one of my favorite creators, The Greyfruit, and create a video that was more mainly focused on the game's core mechanics and how you can manipulate them for your own personal gain. A guide to game breaks. Now, like every fucking roguelike ever, going under is a roguelike. When you die, you restart from the top of the dungeon. However, as you play, you unlock skills, which makes your time in the dungeon easier and more fun. Now, unlike the games such as Binding of Isaac, where the term game break means you've literally gotten to a point where the game could crash, game breaks in going under are to be more about creating stupid broken combos that make the game really simple. Going Under is a game more focused on the combat than how the skills really affect the game. Isaac is all about how passive mechanics break the game. And that's not to say Going Under doesn't care about its skills, because the fact that so many of these skill combos exist means there was some intention of it happening. There are 99 skills in the game, and 12 curses. There's also an absurd amount of weapons in this game, which makes sense because of its core mechanic, which is the weapon durability system. You can use pretty much anything as a weapon. There are also five mentors, who can sometimes contribute to game breaks. Now, each time before you enter dungeon, you can choose a mentor, one skill to bring with you. These two things are the most important part of setting up game breaks. If you bring in any old damage boost skill, your run will be boring and lame. It is imperative that you bring in a specific skill. Skills that I never bring in are ones like the cleaner, which is just a helpful familiar. One that I would bring in would be halt and catch fire, which makes any enemy knocked down catch fire. Two reasons I would choose this one. One, it's a good game break starter. Two, it's rare, and you won't often find it in dungeons. I found there to be three or four common game break runs. This is due to the immense amount of skills that I can help create them. One slash two is the fire slash throwables run. The ability to kill all enemies with fire in the game is made extremely simple and effective with certain combos. First, you're gonna wanna start with one of these skills, Halt and Catch Fire, Hot Shot, or Fiery Glare. I'll explain what the other two do when we get there. First, I'll explain the set of skills which would make Halt and Catch Fire a good game break item. First, any strong attack with any weapon. Why? This will knock down the enemy, causing them to fall over and, you guessed it, catch fire. Second, a universal constant for game breaks is the Bridge Burner skill, which makes all fire do double damage and last longer. Swing for the Fences, which does significantly more knockback and does extra damage when an enemy is hit into a wall. Now along with that, any explosion in the game will also knock over enemies, so a skill like Bomb Dropper, which drops bombs when you roll, is quite useful. But uh oh, now we have a fork in the road, because now we can go down a path which makes it even more skills, such as Action Oriented, which makes explosions deal double damage when you're facing away from them. Now is when skills start to leak into each other, into their own skill trees, because thrown weapons also make enemies fall. So a skill like Yeet or She Don't Miss are very good. But if we're going to go on about throwing things, then Hot Shot is also going to be useful. And now we've incorporated both, which is why this is the Fire slash Throwables game breaks. Back to Halt and Catch Fire though. The other good skill to have is Intimidation, which has a chance to knock over enemies upon entering a room. Oh, and how could I have forgotten? On the topic of strong attacks, there's also non-committal, which makes you not take damage when charging an attack. So yeah, there's a lot of skills that go well together. And that was only branched off of one starter skill. Fire Glare allows you f for a whole player style, which is also a second game break run called you can't see me runs. This whole tree revolves around the skill fake it till you make it, which gives you a disguise every time you enter combat. The enemy won't attack you unless you directly attack them. 
which means that pairing this with the Fiery Glare, which has a chance to burn enemies when you focus on them, and Thought Leader, which has a chance to charm enemies when you focus on them, are very good combos. You can burn down a whole room without even needing to lose a disguise. This also pairs well with the mentor Swamp, who spawns you in on each floor of the dungeon with companions who will kill and die for you. This also leads back to Bomb Dropper, because the bombs don't actually make you lose your disguise. And as we know, Bomb Dropper has its own branch. The final and biggest branch of them all is Absurd Weapons slash Damage Branch. There are so many things that you can string together that the odds of you getting all of them in a single run are slim to none. Speaking of, the best way to get extra skills in your runs are the two mentors Ray and Tappy, who are very good for this. Ray allows you to re-roll things in the shops for a kind of low price. He also spawns in an extra skill room per floor. Tappy will automatically restock the shop for free. However, the item pool for some shops is usually the same. You also get more money when she is your mentor, and she has her own shop, which can sometimes hold useful apps or weapons. Anyway, back to the branch. I'm not even going to recommend a specific starter skill because there are so many. However, I will list off each item and explain how they can each affect the other. Aggro Pal, Wear Many Hats, Keep It Simple Stupid, Cash Injection, Financial Gains, Buzzkill, Fragile Ego, Perfectionist, Crushing It, Spearheaded, Sword Mastery, Freehand, Self Starter, Beggar Queen, Open Minded, Upper Body Strength, People Person, Heavy Hitter, Swing for the Fences, Large and In Charge, Aggressive, Good Under Pressure, Stress Eater, Scaled Up, Agile, Penny Puncher, Go Getter, Retaliator, Scrappy, Disruptive, and Pudgelist. So there's quite a few of these items, and I know that you'll never be able to get all of them in one run, maybe imposter mode, or even complete a single split off branch in one run. But it's good to know that what to look out for and which skills to choose for certain builds. Let's start off with the straight up damage. The best skill to have is financial gains, combined with Tappy as a mentor. This will allow you to get double damage at $100. However, this also means you can't spend much money all run. If you get something like Short-Term Investor, though, you can create insurance and get over $100, so you have a bit of spending money. Some of the staples of this game's runs, of the damage runs, that will always help you are Cash Injection, which increases your strength temporarily after you pick up cash, Aggro Pal, which will deal double damage, or which will double your damage every few seconds if you're close to it, Wear many hats, which increases your strength the more hats you wear. This is one of those skills that's dependent on other skills. Buzzkill, which gives you a higher chance of crit to crit healthy enemies. Self starter, which increases your strength temporarily at the start of combat. Freehand, which I'll get into a bit later. Open minded, which increases your crit chance while unfocused. People person, which increases your damage when there are a lot of people around. Aggressive, which makes which makes break hits do more damage. Stress Eater, which gives you a strength boost after eating food. Penny Puncher, which is the simple explanation, does crit chance up 10. Retaliator, which doubles damage after being hit. And Pudgelist, which doubles damage when you're f with your fists from one to two damage. Now to go into a bit more details about which skills go well together, Freehand allows you to swing two-handed weapons as one-handed weapons. I sometimes consider it to be one of the best skills in the game. Spearheaded, which increases the damage on the tips of spears, is a great foundation. Combine that with Keep It Simple Stupid, which increases your damage if you have multiple of the same item in your inventory, you can have three spears which do about 14 to 18 damage. But it doesn't end there. Because if you can get Deep Pockets, which allows you to hold up to 12 weapons, you can increase it even further. Now, Spear's range is already pretty good, but combine it with Large and a Charge, Beggar Queen, and Scaled Up, which all increase weapon size, and you can reach across the whole room. Speaking of ridiculous weapon size, if you get those three skills on a weapon, like the Jobo Hammer, you can also have Freehand, you can do a Charge Attack, which spins the weapon around the entire room. Speaking of charge attacks, non-committal is great that, for that build. Another build is all about break hits. This branch will revolve around Fragile Ego, 
which increases your damage, but also makes weapons hit in 3-4 to four hits. However, combine this with aggressive, which we talked about earlier, and break hits will do quite a lot of damage. You can also control what health your weapons are by bashing them against other stuff until they're almost broken. There are also a few skills which make break hits freeze or catch enemies on fire. Crit builds, which make your critical hits do more damage, and also charm, electrocute, or catch your enemy on fire are also possible. For those builds, use either buzzkill or open-minded. There are tons of other random combos for things that make the game a lot more interesting, but for now I'm only focusing on the damaging ones. Maybe in the future I'll do a shorter video about them. If you're wondering what my opinion is on these game breaks, I find the massive weapon slash damage ones to be the most fun. Thanks for joining me on this guide, and I hope if you do pick up the game, this guide will help you into figuring it out. I may or may not do a beginner's guide to this game, we'll see. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.